Hey there folks, welcome to the Unihosted YouTube channel. My name is Fernando and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can activate multi-factor or two-factor authentication for your Unify controller. You will need to activate this first on your Unify.ui account and then you will be able to use 2FA on your controller. So I'm going to show you how you can do this on the Unify portal and then how you can set it up on the Unify controller itself. So now let's begin. All right, folks, so the first thing that we need is the UI or Ubiquiti account. If you don't have one, just go ahead and um, go to this website, account.ui.com, and create an account over there. By default, the MFA is going to be the email that you create this account under. So let's say that uh, you want to log into this portal over here. When you want to log in, it will ask you for um, a code that is going to be sent to that email. I already logged in over here, so it's not going to ask me for the code, but I want to show you how you can um, add another MFA method, like for example, a TOTP or authenticator application, okay? So first thing is I need to log in over here with my account. Again, it's not going to ask me for the MFA, perfect. And now you can see here I have a message saying secure your account access by setting up a non-email MFA method. This is because the default one is the email and you need to add another one like I mentioned. So I can just go to security over here and I need to click over here on this blue uh, part and just need to enter my password again. It's asking me to authenticate to unlock this. Okay, you can see I have my email over here. Now the only thing that I need to do is to go here, add new method and uh, Unify or Ubiquiti, they have an application that you can use. Um, I like to use an, another application to authenticate. So I'm just going to scan this QR code with the app that I like to use. There we go, adding here and just try again. There we go. Okay, so just click continue and type the code that I have over here. Okay, perfect. So I have this method now added to my account and I'm going to set this one as the primary one and just leave the email as the secondary. Now, something that I recommend, and this is, will be for every system that you um, set up the MFA, is to generate or to create recovery codes in case you lose access to, in this case, this email, if I lose access to my authentication application as well, with the recovery codes you can get into or uh, you can authenticate with the MFA also. So really important that you create these codes and save, it, save them on a safe place because um, you can use them to authenticate without any of these uh, two methods. Okay, now we already added another MFA method. I prefer to use this one, the app authentication for the controller. And now I'm going to get into my controller. I'll show you um, two scenarios. The first one is going to be if you are setting up a brand new controller. And the second one is going to be if you have already another controller with another user, how you can uh, add MFA there. There's uh, something really particular about that setup, but I will explain that to you later. So let me just close the video here and we will continue on the first scenario. Okay, so here we are. This is just the Unify network application that I installed on my computer. Let me choose my country over here, agree, and next. Okay, now you can see that by default, it's going to ask me for the UI account email. So this is because, so it will sync everything already uh, with the MFA that I have over there. So I'll just add my account and I'm going to enter my password over there. And then it's asking me for the MFA that I just set up a few seconds ago. So let me get the code. And there we go. Now it's setting up the server. This is just the defaults of the Unify controller where you need to wait a little bit and then you can start working on the Unify controller. But I wanna show you how the login works. Now, if I go into admins, you can see that's my uh, username, my email, and something I wanna show you, if you use this method, if you, um, at the beginning of the setup of your new controller, use your UI account, there are two things that are going to be activated. So if, if we go to settings, so we go to system over here and advanced, you see that the remote management and the sync local admins with SSO, they are both activated. These are the two things that you need to uh, enable if you wanna use a UI account or Ubiquiti account to manage the controller, okay? So if I log out, let me just click sign out here and I can use my email. And let me just copy the password. And you can see now, let's wait for a second. Now I need to enter the 2FA. Just let me go over here. And roll it to, there we go. Okay, I'm in. Now, if you want to add another user, depending if you want to add it on a current side or on another side, I just have a single side controller, uh, but you can just go over here. It's going to ask you also for the email and the username. So if that account has the MFA enabled, they will also need to enter that same MFA that they are using. 
Okay, so that should be it for a new controller that you are setting up. This is how you can enter the MFA. Now, something else that I want to show you um, in case the internet is not working for your controller. This is something that can happen um, a lot. I want to show you something uh, really important. So I'm going to disconnect the internet for my computer. As you may be asking how can we authenticate if the controller doesn't have internet because maybe the controller is on um, a gateway or something like that. So I'm going to show you what happens. So let me just enter my email. There you go. Now you can see that I was able to log in without MFA. This is because if I don't have internet, the uh, controller will some kind of skip the 2FA authentication because it cannot authenticate against the UI account or SSO, basically the SSO service. So this is one of the things that will happen if you or the controller doesn't have internet, how you can log in. You can also use the uh, name or the username for um, that account to log in. So let me show you. If we go here, sign out, I just type this without the uh, email domain, boom, password and sign in. And there we go. I'm logged in again using the username. Now, if I connect back to the internet, let me activate my Ethernet card. And I'm just going to sign out again. One more thing. Controller. There we go. Base password. I'm prompt for the MFA again. Okay, so that's it for the first time setup. Next, I'm going to show you if you already have a controller with just local credentials, how you can activate the MFA. Okay, folks, second scenario. And what if we just created the controller with local credentials and without using a UI or Unify account? So what we need to do here is to go into settings and then system and we go to advanced. So two things that we need to activate here. The first one is going to be remote management. And here I need to enter the email and password of my UI account. So let me grab that over here. Just going to use the same one over there. If you need to create one, you can do it from here. So log in and I need to enter the MFA code. Let's grab my phone and boom, boom, boom. There we go. Oops. Okay. So renewing 891081. Okay. Log in. There we go. Okay. And the other one that we need to activate is this one. These are the two options that we had activated when we um, set up with the first scenario. We set up the controller and we use over there the UI account. OK, so with that complete, I'm just going to sign out so I can show you what happens. And I will use that email account that I just used on the remote management part. So sign in. There we go. I just need to enter the code again. Sorry. Give me just a second. There we go. Perfect. So I had to authenticate using my uh, MFA, using the UI account. OK, perfect. Something else that I want to show you is the account that I have over here is not the um, local account that I was using before. This is something important for you to know. For now, from now on, you will need to use this uh, Unify account that you just set up um with the remote management okay so really really important for you to know and the same thing applies if you don't have internet uh it's not going to ask you for mfa and you can either use the name of the account or you can use the um, email account but again um it will be the new one and the old one is not going to work anymore all right folks before wrapping up just two things that i wanted to mention and this is going to be the first one uh something that i just said earlier have a backup of your mfa method um if in case you lose your phone uh, or you lose the uh, tot because whatever reason you lose that mfa authentication please have a backup uh, of that good thing is that unify also leaves your email for mfa um but you can also print recovery codes several methods that you can have or uh, set up in case you lose the primary one and the second thing is before activating any uh big thing like for this example activating mfa on the controller please take a backup of the controller in case things go south so uh, this is a general guideline in unify or any system before you do any major changes okay thank you so much for watching i hope this um, video helps you to give or to have a little bit more of security in your unify controller if you have any questions any comments or a request for another video just leave them in the comment section below my name is fernando and i'll see you in the next uni hosted video ciao ciao